Can benign parotid gland tumors transform into a cancer? I'm Dr. Bob Aclaro from Center for Advanced Parotid and Facial Nerve Surgery. Unfortunately, the answer is yes. There's one type of tumor that can transform. There are many different types of benign tumors that can occur in the parotid gland. There's 15 benign ones, and the most common is called pleomorphic adenoma or benign mixed tumor, which happens 72% of times. There's also 21 types of cancers that can occur in the parotid gland. And, and the reason why there's so many different types of tumors that can occur in the salivary glands is that salivary glands are working very hard. They make two liters of saliva a day, which is one of those big soda bottles. And so uh, they're constantly working, they're constantly regenerating themselves. They're filled with stem cells that transform into these different components of the salivary glands. And because these cells are there, and have the potential of turning into anything, they also can turn into a variety of different kinds of cancers. And so that's why we have so many different types of tumors. The best way to find out if something is a cancer or what type of tumor it is in the salivary glands is by doing a needle biopsy and by placing a needle right smack into the tumor. And this is, can very accurately tell us if something is benign, cancerous, and what type of tumor it is. Because if you have a small tumor, that's benign and it's never gonna turn into a cancer, then maybe you don't need to do surgery. Maybe you can observe it and monitor it, right? And if it starts growing, then maybe you address it. And if it doesn't grow, you can just leave it alone. Let's get back to pleomorphic adenoma, the type of tumor that can transform into a cancer. It is very interesting because uh, it is very common. It has the genetics that have the potential of transforming into a cancer, but it also is interesting in that pleomorphic adenomas which is this, this part of the tumor, can grow into the capsule. The capsule is the dark covering here that you see on this illustration. And so the tumor can grow into it. The, there's some breaches in this capsule, so it has a very imperfect capsule, and the tumor can grow out of the breaches and have little finger-like projections outside, right? or they can separate off and we, we call these satellite lesions, which happens fortunately rarely. Pleomorphic adenomas tend to be very lobular, which means they have all these bulges within them, right? The breaches in the capsule tends to be more common in the parotid gland, but less so in the submandibular gland and other salivary glands. Now, these breaches and these finger-like projections that occur in the parotid gland, as you can see multiple here, are problematic because if a surgeon is less experienced and when they do the surgery they amputate any of those finger like projections then those little pieces that are left behind can grow in time and turn into multiple other cancer uh, benign tumors right so you get a recurrence when you get a recurrence from a pleomorphic adenoma generally speaking it tends to be multiple right this is a picture of a microscopic view of a pleomorphic adenoma here and when it transforms, it turns into a very ugly, aggressive looking type of cancer. Fortunately, the incidence of that happening is low. It's 10% at 15 years. That chance grows over time. So uh, they generally say there's a 25% lifetime chance of this occurring. So if you develop this at a very young age and you have a long life ahead of you, there's a higher chance, of course. If you're 85 years old and you develop a small pleomorphic adenoma, and your lifespan is obviously not as long as a 25 year old, then uh, the chance is less because you just don't give it enough time for that transformation to happen. But when it does transform, it transforms into an aggressive cancer that tends to like to spread. This is a case of a patient that, I, that was referred to me that had uh, a tumor uh, in the product gland. Now this tumor is interesting. It is a rather large tumor, about an inch and a half or four and a half centimeters. If you look at this, this is an MRI of the face at this level, in this orientation. This is, um, these are the teeth for this person. This is the palate here. Um, the parotid gland is on the side there. This is the person's earlobe. And from the deep end of the parotid gland, you see this tumor that's bright white, right? The jawbone is here these jaw muscle here and jaw muscle there. So this tumor is deep to the jawbone and jaw muscles, and it's immediately adjacent to the area of the palate, right? 
or the throat. And another name for the throat is pharynx, right? Parapharyngeal means next to pharynx. So this tumor grew from the deep end of the product and grew next to the pharynx or the throat. And it's pushing the muscles and all sorts of structures around. In trying to do a needle biopsy of this, uh, the radiologists who were trying to do it, they uh, had a hard time getting to this. They thought that the, air, the space was limited because the tumor is between the jawbone and the bone behind and underneath the ear. The space was narrow and there was a blood vessel in the way and they thought it wasn't safe to get to it from this angle to be able to get an adequate sample uh, uh, for us to be able to tell. So we had to go into surgery not knowing what this is. Now this patient had had a tumor in the parapharyngeal area that was discovered years ago when they did an MRI for headaches, not anything related to this tumor. And over the years, they were following this tumor and it was gradually getting larger. And all of a sudden, on the next time they did an MRI, the tumor had grown a lot. And that's when the patient was referred to me for me to take care of it, which again, attempted to do a needle biopsy, but were not able to uh, because of the narrow space and the blood vessel getting in our way. And so we had to go to the operating room not knowing what this is. So during surgery, we sent the specimen to the pathologist while we were in the operating room and the person was sleeping to find out what that is, right? So this is another view of what we had to deal with. You can see the tumor in red deep to the jawbone and you can see the outline of the jawbone in red and in, in white. If you were to imagine the product gland is here, right? And the facial nerve was coming and going over the jawbone coming to the muscles of the face, right? So there's many different ways to approach these types of tumor. One of the ways to do it is to do the traditional approach, which is a modified Blair incision, right? Um, doing this means you have to go through the product and avoid all these branches of the facial nerve to get to it, okay? Uh, the approach we use is called transcervical, where we went under the jawbone and went from underneath up towards which avoided all the branches of the tumor that are going over the jaw right so again if you look at this this is the product land the tumor obviously starting from the deep tip of the product land and since we were approaching it from underneath the jaw here we avoided the facial nerve which is there so we were all the way deep to that area safely tucked away from the facial nerve to get to the tumor i was able to remove the tumor and an additional amount of normal healthy tissue around it we sent it to the pathologist and um, the pathologist told us that this looked more aggressive than benign they couldn't tell me exactly what it is at that point in time because they needed special tests but they could tell that it was aggressive so i took additional tissue and i also removed the lymph nodes in the neck at the same time uh, again, through the same incision here, which allowed me access not only to the tumor, but also the lymph nodes in the neck. And the final pathology showed that this was a carcinoma, expleomorphic adenoma, right? Expleomorphic, meaning it used to be benign and now has turned into a cancer. And it was of salivary ductal var variety, right? And salivary ductal carcinoma is one of the types of cancers that happen in the product land, and it is a very aggressive cancer. So this benign tumor had transformed into a very aggressive cancer. Fortunately, I was able to remove the tumor with an additional amount of healthy tissue around it, and it had not spread to the lymph nodes in the neck. We did some genetic testing on this tumor, and there were um, proteins that we found on the surface that we could use antibodies towards and activate the immune system to attack this tumor and she also had radiation. This was done roughly eight years ago and I've been seeing her regularly since then and she's been doing very well and has been doing just fine. Um, so if you have a parotid tumor, have someone who knows what they're doing, who has a vested interest in treating this, address this, figure out what it is, follow it up closely. If you can do a needle biopsy so you can tell what it is and what you're dealing with, hopefully something benign that it doesn't have a cancerous potential, then you can hopefully avoid surgery and monitor it. And if it grows, then you can do surgery. But if it doesn't grow, you can monitor. If in doubt, 
you may have to do surgery to get it out and see what it is before it can transform into something that is very aggressive and can be harmful. If you're interested in clear parotid information and what to do next, or if you need minimally invasive approaches to treating salivary disease, visit us at parotidmd.com. Uh, subscribe to us. Please ask us questions so we can not only answer you, but make other videos to help guide you along this very anxiety-provoking path. Okay, we're here to help. Be well.